with work complete at ICAR, the series prepared to head west to Alberta. The first stop was Edmonton International Raceway, the quarter mile semi-banked oval in Wetaskiwin, Alberta. This home track just south of Edmonton may be operated by Ron and Loretta Thiering, but for one day in July in the Alberta Has Energy 300, it was owned by none other than Scott Steckley. DJ Kennington is another racer who enjoys his time out west, but a medical mishap at ICAR made it an adventurous journey. I ended up getting a coronary ulcer in my eye. Then I had to drive the holler out west, and it got so bad on Sunday morning when I was driving, I had to stop at the hospital in North Bay, and that was a tough trip for us, but um, all in all, it ended up being okay. By the time I got to Edmonton, the eye was in good shape and we were ready to go. In front of a packed crowd, local favorite James Van Domsler snagged the fastest qualifying time for a short while and was looking good to keep it until Steckley ultimately took the honors. As much as I like Mr. Steckley, I wasn't real impressed with him after his lap, but uh, that was, uh, yeah, first time in the car. I mean, I hadn't been in an oval car since here last year, so we were pretty happy, to say the least, yeah, kind of over the moon. Edmonton International Raceway has a reputation for being a gritty and tough place to race. It has very little straightaway and an outside groove that takes a while to work in. The outside is just brutal there. That's why uh, you need to time yourself trying to make the best you can to stay inside. You know, if you're outside, then you need to shake up your cage a little bit, but uh, it's rough. As the summer prairie sun dipped below the horizon, Steckley had his 22 car handily in charge. Rookie of the Year candidate Mark Antoine Cameron and his 99 white motorsport Chevrolet was new to the oval game. But in Edmonton, this experienced road racer made his presence known. The car was fast, really, really fast at Edmonton. I think I was the only one to maybe challenge uh, Scott uh, over there. The car was really, really good. While Cameron was enjoying success, the other rookie candidate and contender for the points lead, Gary Clute, was having no luck in Wetaskiwin. Edmonton was the first time I ever ran a, uh, an oval that had one groove. Learned a bunch from there and uh, you know, realized if you're going to be inside a guy, just be inside of him enough, not too much. The final green flag run was a four-lap shootout. The inside groove moved quickly, while those on the outside struggled to stay in contention. Steckley's going to win his first to 2015. L.P. Dumoulin finished second in his WeatherTech Dodge and launched himself back into the championship picture, while points leader Jason Hathaway snuck in to grab third. It seems like once you can win a race in a season, it can put you on a roll and you can just keep going, and that's the way, that's the way our team's always sort of been. So to get the win at Edmonton was very big for our team. The series began its trip back eastward with a traditional stop at the one-third mile oval at Auto Clearing Motor Speedway, just outside of Saskatoon for the Velocity Prairie Thunder 250. This midweek showdown marked the halfway point of the season and is always a must-see event on the Saskatchewan summer sports calendar. 19 cars lined up for the feature under threat of ominous-looking skies. The start of the race was controversial. NASCAR deemed that the 0-2 Leland Ford of Mark Dilley jumped the start and never gave the position back to Steckley. The struggling mixed motorsports team couldn't believe the call, nor their luck. Honestly, I think they made a mistake. They just made a mistake, and uh, Mark gave it back, and they didn't see that he gave it back. Um, I don't know how much. The question is how much you're supposed to give it back. Well, I, I believe it's, uh, you know, an inch. The team reported for the penalty and began their journey forward. Andrew Ranger made progress in finding his short track stride in Edmonton. And in Saskatoon, that work paid off. The 27 and the 22 cars proved to be the class of the field. Saskatoon was a sandbox that both enjoyed playing in. With the skies threatening to open at any moment, the drivers all knew they needed to push for early track position. On lap 103, the 87 of Erica Thiering had contact with a faster car, causing a chain reaction pileup on the backstretch. With nowhere to go, her teammate Joey McComb plowed into her driver's side door. My first concern was for Erica because it was a very, very hard hit in the driver's side door. Uh, that was my, my first concern, so I got out of the car right away and went over to check on her. 
it was cars everywhere. Uh, when the 99 moved and, and uh, I saw what was going on, uh, it, was, it was game over <laughs> before the game even started. Canada's best racing team was left on the sidelines, taking inventory of their torn up race cars. And when the green flag flew again, Mark Dilley raced back into contention, while Gary Clute and DJ Kennington kept pace. All three drivers were looking to turn their seasons around and were enjoying the speed that Saskatoon delivers. The early threats of rain never materialized, and the action settled in somewhat in the late running as Westerners James Van Donsler, Jamie Krizak, and Noel Dowler made a push toward the front. A final caution set the field up for a four-lap shootout with Steckling, Hathaway, Ranger, and Cameron leading the way. Both the number three of Hathaway and the 27 Dodge of Ranger made a hard charge, but neither could keep pace with the 22. Make it two in a row for the Canadian Tire Dog. Steckley wins in Saskatoon. Scott Steckley, the 42-year-old three-time champion from Milverton, Ontario, claimed the win to sweep the Western Swing and take control of the points lead. Going into the second half of the season, the Canadian Tire Team was finally hitting their stride. Coming up next, the long month of July draws to a close at Autodrome St. Eustache. You're watching the 2015 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series Year in Review, powered by Mopar.